Hey guys, it's Chris. Today we are going to be answering all of your Wi-Fi related questions. This is something that comes up a lot because we're one of the few systems on the market that actually uses Wi-Fi to communicate between our braking systems, our other products like Tow Battery Charger Plus, and our command center system. So it definitely is a question that we get asked frequently. So to start with, what's the difference? What, when we talk about radio, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, those words get thrown around a lot in today's day and age. What do they actually mean? What's the difference? We'll start with radio and Wi-Fi. The biggest difference here is going to be the frequency spectrum on which these two forms of communication communicate. Radio frequencies, traditional radio frequencies, are of lower frequency than Wi-Fi. So you've often probably seen radio stations, for example. You might have a radio station on 97 kilohertz and then you'll have another one on 115 kilohertz. So these, these radio frequencies are lower in frequency. AM frequencies are lower than FM frequencies. And you've probably seen the difference again in radio stations, FM radio, AM radio. That's the difference there. AM radio frequencies are lower on the spectrum than FM radio frequencies. By contrast, Wi-Fi frequencies are much higher. They're higher frequency settings. Uh, there's two accepted Wi-Fi bands, so to speak. You have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. Those are the two, if you have a router and you've tried to change the settings on those, you may have seen those two different options. Those are the generally accepted Wi-Fi spectrums. So that's the biggest difference, is the frequency range where these forms of communication sit. So how does that affect how they communicate? Well, lower frequency ranges like AM and FM radio use uh, uh, analog signals typically because that's what's best suited for those particular frequencies, uh, which is great for sending something like a voice, which is why it's used for more traditional radio when we think of it that way. Higher frequency settings are best used for larger and more complex data transfers. So when you actually send a signal over Wi-Fi, it's not using an analog signal like traditional radio would, it's actually sending a signal in binary code, ones and zeros, that's how Wi-Fi communicates and higher frequency settings like 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz are much better suited for those data transfers. So how about range? What, what about the range of these devices? Well, lower frequencies, traditional radio signals actually have a higher range, a larger range than Wi-Fi signals do. That's actually a good thing though, because if you think about Wi-Fi, if your Wi-Fi devices could extend across half a city, you can imagine if everyone's got a Wi-Fi router in their home, you have a big problem all of a sudden. So actually with Wi-Fi, it's preferable to have a shorter range. You don't want that signal broadcasting too far. But even with that, you have a pretty good range with most Wi-Fi signals. It depends on the router or that kind of thing. But you can usually get several hundred feet at least out of a Wi-Fi signal. So how does Bluetooth fit into this whole equation? Because oftentimes Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, those can kind of get confused. Bluetooth semantically it's not exactly this way but for our purposes it is very similar to Wi-Fi it communicates primarily on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum the biggest difference though is that a it's less secure Wi-Fi allows for more security and B is the range that it has so Bluetooth has a much shorter range than Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi will allow you to have multiple access points whereas Bluetooth can only really have one that's effective uh, Bluetooth does utilize less power, so that's why you'll often see it used for things like speakers or headphones or that kind of thing. It's very effective for those purposes, but when we're talking about, again, complex data transfers, we really want to opt for Wi-Fi, tends to be the best choice for those. So how does all this pertain to RVI products? Our products utilize Wi-Fi and radio. We use radio for our tire patrol sensors because again, there's a lot less data that we have to communicate there. So for those, radio works rather effectively. We also get a better range because our sensors can tend to be further away. They have farther to communicate with our hub. So it winds up being a very effective. Our other products, the RBI brakes, whether that's the Shadow or the 3, and then also things like our Toad Battery Charger Plus, those utilize Wi-Fi. We want more security with those products, first of all, and then we also have large amounts of data, very complex amounts of data that have to come through. So that's why Wi-Fi works very effectively for a lot of those products. And finally, what's the difference between Wi-Fi and internet? Because those two words really get used synonymously in today's day and age. They're actually very different things. So the internet, is just a collection of web pages that you can access from any location where you have an internet access point, which does require Wi-Fi. However, they are not the same thing. Wi-Fi is simply the protocol, the spectrum, that is being used to communicate data 
over. So that's what we're using when we're using the internet. We're communicating over Wi-Fi. However, the internet is not Wi-Fi. They're very different things. So as that pertains to RVI products, you do not need the internet in order to be able to connect our devices, our hub, our little hockey puck shaped device, that puts out a Wi-Fi network that all of our devices can communicate on. But because again, the internet is different from Wi-Fi, we do not need internet access in order to utilize our products. That's really good news in case you're traveling in a remote area or something like that. Your Wi-Fi connection between your RVI Break 3, your tablet, your Toad Battery Charger Plus, all of those is unbroken because again, internet and Wi-Fi, not the same thing. This is kind of a general overview of how Wi-Fi works, how it relates to our products, how our radio frequencies work with tire patrol, all of that kind of thing. But obviously this is a really broad topic and there may be other questions. So if you have any others, make sure to reach out to us. Our customer service team would love to answer them for you. In the meantime, guys, happy RV. Hey guys, thanks again for joining us. We can't wait for you to dive in a little bit deeper on this channel. We've got tons of other great videos, videos on products, stories, tips and tricks for when you're on the road. Before you go check those out though, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It may sound a little cliche, but it actually really does help us here on the YouTube side of things to make sure that we can continue to provide this kind of content for you. So if you've got any questions at all, never hesitate to reach out. We always love hearing from you. Guys, in the meantime, happy RVing.